Hey guys, it's me, MMB Mighty Max Boxing, and today I have two-time champion of the world, Cornelius K9 Bundridge, on my channel. Thank you so much for joining us. Truly appreciate it. Oh yeah, all love. Oh, 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 a bark, a bite, sure. over the right. <laughs> What's yes. up, my dog? Thank you so much for coming on here. It's gonna ask you some questions. So to begin this off, I want to know how did you get into boxing? What made you decide that you wanted to become a fighter? Um, well, you know, Rocky. You know, everybody wants to be Rocky. <laughs> you know, the music come on, you got the dun dun, you jogging the hood with all your homeboys. Um, my mama bought me when I was a kid, she bought me a Rock'em Sock'em game. So the Rock'em Sock'em game, you know, I enjoyed that. And um, Mike Tyson, Iron Mike Tyson, boy, I realized that I didn't have to be a giant, you know what I mean, to be able to be a boxer, you know what I mean? Or so I said, because I wasn't um tall. I ain't have to, you know what I mean? I, I wanted to play basketball, but for the fact that I wasn't tall enough to dominate, you know, I saw somebody that was short in boxing that was dominating, which was Mike Tyson. I said, oh, man, I want to box. Yep, that's what's beautiful about the sport of boxing. You know, anyone of any frame is capable of becoming a champion and being great. You know, you did fight in 2020, but, you know, we're, we're in 2022 now. Do you miss being in the ring? Do you miss fighting these other opponents? Uh, well, you know, I haven't fully, I haven't retired yet. Um, I plan on doing my, um, my walk away fight in September, you know, if everything goes well and then, you know, I'm going to be done, but no, I really don't really miss it. Cause you know, boxing is a dirty game. It's a rough sport to, you know, to be, um, in. So no, I wouldn't, I, I, I it'd be kept, it'd be tripping me out when people be crying after they retire, like, <laughs> <laughs> I had a long career and no, um man, you ain't get hit no more. You should be the happiest man in the world. That's true. That's true. Some fighters they just have that addiction, but you know, every fighter deserves that, that closing out fight to end their career. And I'm excited to see you return in September and see that happen. You know, you've been in the ring with so many great opposition. You've had so many pro fights. Who do you consider is your best opponent today out of all the fighters you faced? Um, well, I would have to say my best opponent today was Jamal Charlo, because um, he's still undefeated. So he was definitely uh, my best opponent. He ain't lost a fight yet. And he's, you know, considered one of the best fighters today. Has someone been in the ring with him, do you think he stands a shot against these other top fighters like Canelo, or you'd still pick Canelo over? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I think um, when they were fighting at Jerry Middleweight, I gave him a better chance at beating um, Canelo at Jerry Middleweight. Sure. But at 168, you know, I gave Canelo the edge ever since. You know, he fought Triple G, and he beat him the second time. You know, he just done took off like an airplane, and he done got better and better. And even though he lost to, you know, David Bavar, I still give him credit for even taking the chance to even move up the weight. How many other fighters you see doing that? Triple G haven't moved up since day one. You know what I'm saying? True. And Keller went from, what, 147 all the way up to 175. Yeah, he's, he's really accomplishing a lot in the sport, and you got to commend him for that. You know, I know your nickname is K-9, because you see my dog in the room, coincidentally. It's no, funny that. Well, where yeah. did that nickname come from? Are you, are you really a big dog person, or has, do people say you have that dog in the ring? What made you decide to go with that nickname to fight? Uh, well, you know, uh, being from Detroit, one of the roughest cities in the world, one of the scariest cities in the world, being from the hood, I, I didn't think that my real name, Cornelius, would, would demand respect, but I knew K9 would. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, he a dog. Where he at? You know what I mean? And at the same time, I used to rap. So, you know, I could kill two birds with one stone. K9 a fighter, K9 a rapper. It's awesome. It's awesome. Do you have a favorite dog breed by any chance? Um, hmm. That's a good one. I mean, I like all dogs. You know, I like all dogs. You know what I mean? I like, shoot, Devin Haney, he a dog. You know, Lori Mayweather, he a dog. <laughs> I'm a dog. My little son, you know, he boxed not too. He a dog. Um, shoot, I like um, shoot, I like Yorkies. I like, I actually like little dogs because little dogs, you know what I mean. I'm a little dog, you know what I mean. And you know, don't bark if you can't bite. You know what I'm saying. They say it ain't how with well, the size of a dog, but I'm big. I, I forgot the saying, but it ain't the size of a dog, but it's a dog is the size, something like that. But you know, once the fans are done, they're gonna say, I know what he was talking about. Yes, sir, champ. Yes, sir. Now, you mentioned yeah. how you're from Michigan, from Detroit, actually. You think that shaped you into a better fighter and a stronger fighter and given you a stronger mindset in general? Yeah, well, you know, being from the hood, you know, not having a dad, 
you know, being on welfare, you know, struggling and having to get out there and provide at an early age, I think that gave me more hunger, you know, gave me more hunger. Um, shoot, I don't know no kid that ever did as many push-ups as I did from age 11 years old to 14. I did a thousand push-ups a day, every day from 11 years old to 14. So if I was in a, so the Guinness Book of Records is probably on me, you're looking at the kid, that's right, with the, with the most push-ups ever in three years. From 11 years old to 14, I did a thousand push-ups a day. A day. That, that is next level. I mean, push-ups are probably, I would say they're, they're arguably the toughest out of all of them because they're, they're pure endurance, all that force going down. It's, that, that's really commendable. That's definitely helped you as a fighter, I bet, with endurance and with strength in general. Uh, you know, you've been fighting for a long time. You were the oldest world champion at a point in your career. How have you been able to maintain your ability for so long? Yeah, um, perseverance, you know, living a clean life, hashtag Jesus for life, um, you know, being a Christian, you know, God giving me the strength to, you know, to do all things because with God, all things are possible. Um, you know, you, you know, not, you know, doubting me, you know, people doubting me gave me strength, you know what I mean? And saying what I can't do when I knew I could, you know, and, um, you know, just being the underdog, you know, being the underdog, you know, underdogs will prevail, especially when you, have that I ain't going to give up mentality. And if I, if I was able to, you know what I mean, to, you know, make it, you know, through graduate, you know, to not graduating from being from the hood, not having a dad, I just want to motivate other fighters and other kids that's up and coming, you know, to be something and never, never doubt yourself or never give up and throw in a towel. That's, that's really commendable, most definitely, you know, you've been able to, shock a lot of people when you beat Carlos Molina in Mexico to become the two-time champion and the oldest champion. That was an amazing moment of your career. Is yes. it, is, was that your defining career moment? And if it wasn't, what was your defining career moment as a fighter? Well, you know, um, I did a lot of great things in the sport of boxing. Um, I don't know if I would say winning the world championship at the age of 41 and becoming the oldest world champ to this day um, in junior middleweight history, that's a good one. But I can't say it's the greatest. Um, losing my first fight to a guy named Saku Powell, where they still showed a replay on Showtime, where he hit me. I hit him. We both knocked each other down. They were knocked down. Then I got up and he finished me. Getting a rematch with him and, de and defeating him, beating him, you know, whoop that trick, whooping that trick. That might be the biggest win because, you know, I never lost a fight in my life until that day. I'm talking about as a kid. Uh, in the streets, in a boxing ring, it hurts so bad to, to, to lose. You know, one thing about me, I'm not a loser. So to get him back in the ring and beat him, man, that, that was up there. You know, that's up there with winning the, uh, my second world title and becoming the oldest world champ in Jeremy middleweight world history. Um, fighting on the contender. After I had lost that fight, I was on um, maybe the second biggest reality show of all time. You know, American Idol was probably the first biggest reality show of all time. But the reality show, the contender, you know, going on there, being selected and being viewed by millions of people and, and my back up against the wall. Nobody thought that I was going to win. They didn't think I had a chance. I had just lost that fight with Sakupa cool on Showtime and getting the victory. The very first fight, the very first episode, that was huge. Yeah. And when I beat um, Nino Barabo at the Staples Center, when my sister had got killed, and I dedicated the fight to her, that was big. So it's, it's, it's a few of them. It's a few of them. It's really hard. We went in my first world title. You know, we hadn't had a world champion in Detroit, Michigan in 27 years mm -hmm. since Tommy Hearns out of the crunk gym. So for me to win a world title and bring the belt back to the city of Detroit, that was huge. So it's, it's, a, it's a few of them. It's quite a few of them. It's Sorry. hard to pick which one. Sorry for your loss, champ. And I was going to mention – you know, the contender. That was that's such a big show and if you're one yeah. of the fan favorites, I I looked it up and you know that, yeah. that must have been a great experience and a great opportunity for you in your career. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you have a boxing YouTube channel and you actually talk about the current landscape of boxing. Who are some of your favorite past and present fighters in the sport? Some of the fighters that inspired you when you were younger and some of your favorite yeah. current fighters to watch now? Um Mike Tyson, definitely. Roy Jones, Shane Mosley, Tommy Hearns. Sugar Ray Leonard, um, Floyd Mayweather, and um, who else? Did I say Roy Jones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's really um, and 
now, um, I sparred Tyson Fury, so Tyson Fury definitely. Yeah, you know, Tyson Fury trained out of Crunk Gym. He's actually training with my former former trainer, um, Sugar Hill. So Fury, um, Lennox Lewis, um, Devin Haney, and he got the will to win. Javante Davis, um, Deontay Wilder, bomb squad. You know, it's it's quite a few. You know, it's quite a few. That must have been some very interesting sparring, fighting a guy nearly seven foot in Tyson Fury. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and Errol Spence, too. Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford, too. Oh, yeah, six foot nine. Man, that boy a giant. I remember yeah. when he asked me to spar with him. Tyson <laughs> Fury, the Gypsy King. I was like, stop it! <laughs> that must have been, that, that must have been a, big, uh, a crazy experience, sparring a guy like Tyson Fury. Yeah, that's right. So, I have a question. You have a true passion for a sport, even when you're not fighting. You know, when you're, yeah. when you're being commentating and, and when you're analyzing the sport have yeah. you always had this joy of watching the sport and what do you truly love about watching boxing um i like i like to watch fights um where most of the times you don't know who's gonna win it's like you know i like to be in suspense i like to be you know i, I don't like to know the future you know what i mean um uh, man so to just not know who's gonna win and, and to be able to call a fight as it's playing out, knowing I've been in there and I can see kind of like what's going on because I'm picturing that's me. You know, what would I do? You know what I mean? And I, I you know what? I was slipping through the hook. Uh, and he just, oh, I told you. I told you. Stop it. And he knocked him out. You know, I like just being a part of the sport. You know what I mean? And watching it for what it is and respecting it for knowing what it is, for being in there and knowing it ain't easy, you know, for people to call, especially a, fight, a young man who has never gotten a ring. To call another fighter a bum, it's like, man, you know, that's very disrespectful, you know. But I understand what they're saying, you know what I mean? But it's just like loose lips sink chips. Or yep. loose lips sink ships. There we go. I was like, I was actually about to say, you know, a lot of these fans that watch the sport, they love saying what they what a, a fighter should have done in that position. But you're actually one of the very few that watch that could actually give a real opinion on what a fighter should have done because you've been in there so many times and you, you know what some fighters should do in certain situations. So – that's really cool yeah. as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's like, you know, um, at, at the moment in time a, a fight is actually taking place, it, it can just depends on in the mood that I'm in. I can come up with a lot of analysis or analysis or, or I can commentate on what I would do in so many different situations. Like, you can put me in that same situation and I can give you a different outlook on that same situation. So that's, that's the beauty of it where, you know, a person who's never been in there can only give you what they see, and that's just it, and they'll go back to what they just said. Or if they had to go repeat it, they'd probably forget. They'd probably just freak out. When and With me in, the, in that same situation, I can go through uh, a thousand things I could have did or should have did or would have did. That's awesome, champ. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Before we wrap this up, can you tell people where they can find you on social media? Yeah, yeah. You know, everything is all K9 Boxing. On Instagram, is K9 Boxing. Twitter is K9 Boxing. Um, Facebook is K9 Boxing and it's K number nine B O X I N G. Now on TikTok, it's K9 Boxing without the I because Jake Paul stole my name, K9 oh. Boxing <laughs> with the I. So it's K9 Boxing B O X N G, not I, but N G on TikTok. But on um, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and my YouTube is banging. So we had 30 almost 31,000 subscribers now. So I appreciate all the fans for tapping in. And when you tap in, don't forget to whoop that trick. Whoop that trick. And that is the like button. Whoop the like button. Um, subscribe to the channel. We'll hit the notifications. And I appreciate you. And thank you for, you know, having me on your show. And I wish you the best. Hashtag dogs us. Ar, 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 ar. Let's go champ. Thank you so much for coming on. It was an honor having you. And uh, we'll be supporting you on for your final fight and draw all your journeys. Have a good one. Thank week. you, brother. All right, cheers. Cheers.